Welcome to this week's vlogging video. I am doing one of my favorite type of videos. We try to do this at least once a quarter and it is a Q&A. So we gathered a lot of questions from our Facebook group, which you get into if you take one of our courses and the questions are super, super good. I have them pulled up on my laptop. I wanna get the elephant out of the room. I'm having a bad hair day. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera and I'm like, oh God, maybe today's not my day to um, film a video, but the answers will still be the same. So let's get into it right away. Oh my gosh, okay starting with quite the question how do you get your business legally set up for what happens next if you die well um very serious so i don't deal with anything legal i take that immediately to a lawyer um i work with all different types of lawyers there's about five lawyers that i speak to on a regular basis and i also have backup lawyers if they are unavailable i always am saying that I will never go to jail for this vlog. <laughs> it is obviously not worth it to me and I would rather have everything looked over by a lawyer. Um, so my lawyer has gotten everything set up from a legal standpoint. I do use Amira Law blog um, or a self-made blog guru. I'll put the exact ones that I bought for my blog um, and it is like, she's a lawyer and she now specializes in blogging and for a lot, lot, lot less expensive, you can buy her packages, which goes over like verbiage for what you should include on your blog. We have Honey, Honey the guest, my dog. Um, and that's what I did in the beginning because I obviously couldn't afford a lawyer. But now we have everything go through a lawyer because it just helps me sleep better at night. I'm actually in the process of writing up my will right now. So this is tbd on how exactly i'm handling this i'm still trying to figure that out um i do realize that the company is very very much right now in a place that if i was to die i don't know what would happen to it because it revolves a lot around me um but i'm trying to get it in a place where that is not the case so that even if i was to die the girls or like the team could continue doing the business um, just without me, if they so chose. Um, and then, okay, sh we're getting nailed down with questions about this. This is stressing me out. <laughs> um, how do you go about getting yourself prepared for the unknown? Again, lawyers and insurance. I just met with my insurance agent and we were going over basically every single scenario that we possibly could think of. Um, and he made it very clear that, you know, there are some scenarios that you just cannot plan for, but everything that we could possibly plan for, we have planned for, and I pay a lot of money to insurance, but again, it helps me sleep at night and it is worth it for me to just to make sure that, um, nothing happens with it. Okay. Next question on a lighter note. What is your TikTok strategy? So just like everything else, shocker on the blogging world, I do have a TikTok strategy. Um, TikTok is constantly changing. I will say I've like basically focused on the same content, but slightly have shifted. And just as I get busier and less busy with other side of work, my workflow kind of goes up and down. So when I first started, I was very, very, very strategic with how much I posted, um, how I edited my videos, the type of videos I did, etc. Then about a year in, my workload got insane and I had to take I still was posting, but it definitely wasn't as much. And now this year I am back to posting almost every single day, which I don't know if it's actually doing what I need it to do. Like I'm right this week, I'm going down to three days a week because it takes a long freaking time to film a TikTok video, like really, really, really long time. Um, and I'm wondering if it's just a better use of my time to do like three videos a day, make sure that the three videos a day are really, really good. So we're in testing phase of that right now, but there are certain ways that I edit. There are certain times of the day that I post. There are certain ways that I word my captions, lay out my feed, um, what type of videos I do, content calendars, etc. And teaser, we have a mini social media course coming out in the next few weeks slash like might be early April. Um, and it's gonna be really, really good. It goes over Instagram. Um, YouTube and TikTok. It is a much lighter course, aka it's gonna be a lot less expensive. It's not as in depth or 
detailed as the other courses again why it's not as expensive but it does go over all of my strategies and will help you be able to successfully start or run a social media account and kind of just get like a leg up because i really am transitioning a lot of the strategies i use on my blog that have been proven over onto social media so that was a long winded answer to that one what are the image file sizes and exactly how to use the image compression plugin that you use we use short pixel um i don't even know how i found short pixel but i found it probably like four years ago at this point and we've used it ever since um we do have strategic sizes that we upload for pinterest and we mostly just make our blog images to be like toe and toe with those and then we just upload them and um they have a plugin short pixel has a plugin so we really don't need to do anything they will compress all of our images um i think it takes it down like a little bit of quality but nothing that anyone would ever actually be able to notice and it helps our website run much, much faster. So I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend Short Pixel. I wonder if I get a coupon code. We should ask. I'm gonna message the girls right now to see if they can get in contact with someone to ask for that. All right, um, systems. So your system's getting you from research to blog posts, not the detailed process you describe in the course, more high level and from a daily operations perspective. Do you batch research post topics? Do you outline the post and then add suiting products or do you create the structure based on the items you wanna feature? Great question. So every like six months, I sit my butt down at a coffee shop and I go and brainstorm all different types of content. Um, and I have huge lists, I have papers everywhere. I print out calendars because I like to actually write it down on paper. Um, and it's like very messy, but it works for my head and I come up with like content ideas for the entire next six months uh, But that's really all I do is come up with like the keyword in that process Otherwise, it'd be way too overwhelming then every single week as I'm actually like getting ready to write the post That's when I go and do the more nitty-gritty So I'm not doing any other type of research besides just the like big keyword the main keyword um in that one batch and then weekly I do the more in depth like this is how I'm gonna lay it out these are the products I want to include um, and for the outline of the post we really keep the same outline for a lot of our posts again check out perfecting blogging we go through the exact outline um, but that is kind of more on like high level on how we handle it from a systems perspective and how are those tasks now divided up in the team? Are you still heavily involved or is the blog completely delegated to the team? So delegation is one of the best things I've learned over the last two years. I had a business coach that had to teach me how to learn how to delegate because I am shocker, a control freak, and it's really, really hard for me. There are certain things that I have to do. Um, and there are other things that I absolutely do not have to do and my team is now much much better at them than I am um, So the team I mean, I'm just one person I only have 24 hours a day and we're running three different businesses um, I am right now really heavily involved in BSL studios. I'm actually trying to be less Involved in BSL studios because right now it's like makes up my full-time job essentially um, and I want to put more time into the other businesses. So we have two girls who really help with the website. Um, I am still leading all of the keyword research. Um, I'm still overviewing everything um, for products. I am still dealing with like products and researching them, but they do a lot a lot of the work and um, they took the courses they have learned from me on how to do it um, I like like the things that need more of my language I write the more personal things I write um, and it has worked out really really great for us read um, oh my gosh four hour work week it changed my perspective on delegation even though so right when I read four hour work week I like really started I started realizing that if i was to grow this business how i want to grow this business that i would need to start delegating so that was like the first step and then i did like mini delegations but i was still like basically controlling everything and then two years ago i had to really get my butt in check and fully delegate um which i don't think i'll ever be able to fully delegate because again i'm a control freak but 
that is kind of how we like lay it out right now. Um, I'm still involved in all of the different parts of the business, but they are definitely like we have different girls in each of the sectors of the businesses that really are the ones that like run it and make sure that it is running smoothly. Personal experience, the positives and negatives about different stages in business. Oh, that's such a great question. Um, okay, so I think that the first year that I started my blog, which is like the first year that I consider myself in business, um, it was really, really exciting. And it was something that I am really good at setting a goal and then like trying to prove to everyone that I can actually make that goal. Um, so that was really motivating for me. And also I was doing so much research and seeing everyone else have so much success that that was also really motivating to me. There was definitely points in the first year that I was like, okay, I just did six months of basically full-time work on the blog and I'm not seeing anything in return, which is completely normal and you shouldn't see anything in return in those first few months. Um, but I'm so glad that I kept going. I always say that it's blogging is not hard, but it takes a long time. So people give up and the people that do end up succeeding are the ones that just kept going and, did it and didn't give up. Um, I... Um, have money trauma so I when as we started hiring people I would say that like that's one of the negatives in the business is I was just so nervous to take the leap on hiring and then when do you hire the next person when do you hire the next person and can we afford it and how much how much do you need to afford it and who can tell you if you can afford it or not like am I supposed to decide if we can afford it like I don't know that was something that was really stressful to me and then also I am just in the grinding phase of my business and I, I want to be in the grind phase of my business because I'm like, okay, my 20s are for me to really get this business established. And then my 30s, I still want to have the business fully running, but I don't want to be as involved so that I can focus on a family. So right now I'm just like the biggest negative is I'm tired. I mean, it is currently 730 in the morning. And I'm filming this video and I worked until like eight o'clock last night. Um, and thank God I love my work. Otherwise it'd probably be way harder, but I'm tired and it's hard um, feeling a lot of like the pressure. I don't know, I just feel a lot of pressure, but I really am so blessed. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so, so blessed. And I've been really strategic with the business that um, even when something's low and I'm stressed out about it, like we have other parts of the business that carry us in those times. So um, it's definitely, there's definitely a lot of positives and negatives. I could have a whole video going over the positives and negatives um, about different stages in business and just about like being a business owner in general. What's your current time management and organizing your blogging time look like? What would you recommend if you have another job or several? So I can kind of like hit on this from many different points. I'll answer the first question. Um, what's your current time management and organizing your blogging time look like? So I am, I use two different planning program softwares ish. Um, I have a paper planner. Shout out the daily. I'm a huge paper person. I like to write things down. And then I also have a Google Calendar that is absolutely jam packed. Um, I, for example, here's my Google Calendar from this week. Um, I try to follow my Google Calendar as much as possible. So I guess let me take a step back. So my paper planners for me personally, I scribble in this, I write down random thoughts. No one sees this besides me and no one would probably understand what I'm writing besides me in here. Whereas my Google Calendar, that's what the entire team sees. So as far as um, how do I separate out the different tasks when I have another job or several jobs. So this is kind of an example of like, I guess I kind of do have multiple jobs, like at least multiple hats in the business. Um, and this is a prime example of the delegation. So each of the teams that we have, they are in charge of adding in time blocks for me for what I need to do for them. So for example, um, Kate who, Kate or Sarah, I don't know who did it, who is, who runs like a lot of the blogging stuff, they put in my calendar that I need to film this video. Now they put in my calendar to film this video at 9.30, I'm filming it at 7.30, so I do move things around, but I almost use my calendar as like my to-do list because I know like, okay, these are the things I need to get done for the team so that they can get their jobs done. Um, 
So that's where I'm at right now, but I really did handle it in a similar situation when I was a college student. So when I was a college student, I was a full-time student. Um, I was also nannying like 14 or 15 hours a week in the beginning. And then um, I was obviously doing blogging too. And so my Google Calendar, I still used one and it was very similar to how it is right now, honestly, and I would block up my time. I would start my days at 6 a.m. in the morning. I would um, batch all of my school classes as much as I possibly could. Obviously, there were some cases in some semesters that it just wouldn't work out, but I like to have all of my classes done in the morning, so I would like to have them from like 8.30 to, gosh, 12 or whatever it was, and then from 12 to 2, I would do, um, I would like, do homework and then from two to five i would go and nanny and then from five to ten at night i would blog or whatever it is obviously that's not exact but that's how i would divide up my time and i would use my calendar and i would sit down every sunday and look like okay when can i fit this in how can i manage all of this and i am very add and so i can't it's hard for me to go back and forth so much which is like my issue right now is because i'm constantly going from blogging to like construction to the daily like i'm so all over the place and my brain takes a while to get there so if i had my ideal world i would more like get everything condensed into one section so that my brain can stay on the same path which is what i did in college and really really enjoyed so time block i swear it will change your entire life um how do you recover from a major pinterest algorithm change did you have any major stats plummet or increase due to algorithm changes when you first started okay i love this question and um you probably heard me speak on this question a lot and i talk about it a lot in my pinterest perfecting pinterest course um people freak out at algorithm changes and pinterest is constantly doing algorithm changes and if you freak out at every single algorithm change, you are going to be in a constant freak out. And it is just so absolutely not worth it. We have essentially done the same extract strategy for six years since I started. And our strategy is still working amazing. And you know what we do? We don't change our strategy when an algorithm happens. And I think people's worst thing that they could do is that when an algorithm change happens and their stats plummet, which happens to us all the time, they'll plummet for a week or two weeks or even three weeks sometimes, they change their entire strategy. And then you don't know what part of that change actually works, what doesn't work, um, is the Pinterest algorithm going to level out because it usually always does level out. So the biggest thing that I can say is do not change your strategy. And if you are going to change your strategy, change one thing at a time. So how we handle it on our end is we really look at it and are like, okay, is this something that we should change? We are really, really, really big testers. So we're always testing new things out, but we always do it again, one at a time so we can really pinpoint if it works or not and we give it at least six weeks so for our blogging courses we are always testing something for at least at least six weeks and then if that thing works that is when we will go and update the course because it takes a long time even six weeks isn't as long as we should probably give it um, and we are constantly having major stats plummet or increase because of algorithm change I'm like trying to read the question always like I just wrote a, something yesterday on a person in our Facebook group that was like, I've been following the strategy um, and my stats were great, but just last week they plummeted and now I'm freaking out and I don't know what to do. And like, I'm internally being like, don't change anything you're doing. It will level out. Again, we've consistently used the same strategy pretty much for the last six years. And I think that Pinterest really likes the consistency, which is why our stats always go back up so don't freak out at all it will do much worse harm for you if you freak out okay great follow-up question i noticed that your stats didn't seem to budge this december in light of the change how do you fly under the algorithm change radar why does it affect some of us but not others all i can say is one we try to put out the absolute best most helpful content which is something that google is constantly changing their um, algorithms to be able to find better. We add personal 
stuff on experiences that we've actually had which is also that something google likes and i think just going back to like how can i make this the most absolutely helpful post out there for someone to read has allowed us to constantly be on google's favor while also very much thinking of seo strategies um, but i think the bigger thing on why we're able to fly under the radar is because again we don't change your strategy which now i feel annoying because i've harped on this for the last five minutes but seriously like when an algorithm change happens, whether it's on a social media, whether it's on Pinterest, whether it's on Google, do not change everything that you're doing. Google doesn't like that when Google doesn't like when you do that. Pinterest doesn't like when you do it. No one likes when you do it. I would be very, very, very strategic. I would wait it out a few weeks to see if, okay, was it just like a few week thing or are my stats still plummeting? I would give it at least six weeks. I don't know. I just think that we don't freak out at all like we do not freak out have your eggs in different baskets so that you don't need to freak out um but i honestly think that like our consistency and the way that we do our strategy is the reason why we're able to not have big issues when algorithm change happens all right that is the end of this q a i hope you enjoyed i love doing the q a's you get my raw like feedback on your question right away and they're just really fun um and for also you should add more questions down below in the comments because that's where we get all of our youtube topics so if you have anything else that you want me to hit on in a more intense variation definitely um add them into the comments thank you so much check out our courses we get super super nitty gritty and i will see you at next week's blogging video